Hello everyone and welcome to another video on thermochemistry. This one is all about Hess's law and how to work through a Hess's law problem. I picked an example from the workbook. I picked question 12D. It's on page 23 of your workbook. There are many, many examples of Hess's law in the workbook. I only chose one. I chose one with um, three sort of uh, equations to work with just because it's a little bit harder than a question with two equations to work with and you know not as difficult as a, a question with maybe four or five reactions to kind of play around with. So I chose one sort of in the middle. Hopefully this one will be um, helpful to anybody you know stuck on this process of how to work through a Hess's law problem. So let's go ahead and get started. And I have everything written out here. I'm going to try to write it as we're kind of talking. So bear with me a little bit. So we start off with this equation. Uh, C3H8 plus 5O2 makes 3CO2 and water. And my delta H is unknown. I don't know what the delta H is for that particular reaction. What I want to know is its delta H. What is the enthalpy of that reaction? Hess's law tells me that I can use other chemical reactions that I do know the delta H for. They can be manipulated because remember delta H is extensive. I can change the size of the, my delta H by changing the size of my reaction, multiplying or dividing all of my coefficients from my chemical reaction will apply to the delta H. I can manipulate it by reversing reactions exothermic one way, endothermic the opposite way. So I can do a bunch of different things to these sort of, uh, we'll call them distractors or so, uh, these reactions. And I can figure it out, I can work it, I can manipulate them in such a way that it's going to match the reaction that I don't know my enthalpy for. I can switch them, I can reverse exo or endo, and I can multiply or divide my coefficients as long as I get it in the end to match my uh, big reaction that I'm looking for. You can add together chemical reactions just like you can add together algebraic equations. They're the same, same idea. So reactants on each side will add, reactants and products will cancel if they're the same, and then products on each side will also add. Okay, so I can do a few manipulations here to try to figure out what is gonna, what's going to change, what's going to move, or maybe nothing will change and nothing will move. I don't know. So let's have a look. We'll start off um, with the very first molecule here, C3H8. So what you want to do when you first approach this problem is you look for a reactant or a product. Just choose one. It doesn't matter. Choose one that only appears one time in your three or four or five other reactions that you have to work with. So if I'm choosing C3H8 and I look through these one, two, three, actually, why don't I just number them so we'll, we'll get them confused. If I look through reactions one, two, and three, I see that C3H8 appears in reaction number three and it appears on the product side. So that's good. I see it and it's there only one time. If it's only appearing one time, I know that that reaction I can manipulate to match this C3H8. I need C3H8 to be a reactant in my overall reaction that I don't know my enthalpy for. In equation three, it appears as a product. So that's telling me that I need to reverse this reaction. I need to switch it right at the opposite direction so that C3H8 is a reactant and not a product because I want it to be a reactant in my overall reaction. So I'm going to make a little note to myself here and I'm just going to say reverse REV. So I, I will know what I need to do to that equation. I'm going to look for something else that only appears one time. So if I'm looking for Let's see, uh, CO2. CO2 needs to be a product right here. And there it is one time in my equations one, two, three. 
also appearing on the product side, on my correct side, which is good. Now the number of moles of CO2 is not the same. I need to have three moles of CO2 and right there I have only one mole of CO2. So what I can do to equation number one is multiply everything in equation number one by three. That's going to multiply the magnitude of delta H by three as well. And then my CO2 will then match where it needs to be in my overall reaction. So that's what I'm looking for. Now if I look at equation 2, I haven't decided yet if I have to do anything to equation 2. Equation 2 has um, a water in it, and that's the only water that appears here in the 3. I need water to be a product. There it is right there. Water is a product in equation 2, which is awesome. It's on the correct side. However, I need four of them. I need four moles of water, and right there I have only one mole of water. So again, I'm going to make a little note to myself. I'm going to multiply this reaction by 4 to get it to equal where it needs to be in my overall reaction. Now some of you might be saying, well, what about the other things? What about this carbon solid? What about this H2 gas? Okay. Um, they don't appear in my overall reaction. Well, what's going to happen when I manipulate these three and then I add the three of them together? Anything that's not appearing in this, in this overall reaction should cancel if I'm making the correct changes. Okay. So what I like to do after I have my little notes here, I'm pretty confident that they're right, but just to be sure, what I would do is I would write out again each reaction with the changes that I'm going to make with this multiply by 3, by 4, and then reverse. I'll add them together, make sure everything that cancels is supposed to cancel and everything that adds is supposed to add so that I end up with my overall reaction. So now this might take a couple of minutes here to write out, so just bear with me because I want to make sure that we are, we are doing the correct changes, you know. So the first one is timesing by 3, and I'm going to leave off the states and all this now just to make it again like a little bit faster. So this is now three carbons and three O2 and three CO2. I'm going to also multiply that delta H by three. I'll do that at the end to make sure that everything here is working first. The second one I'm going to multiply by four. So four H2, four times a half would give me two oxygen, okay, and then four water on my product side. And then the third one, I said we're going to reverse it, so I'm just going to reverse this. I'm not changing, I'm not multiplying by anything. So C3H8 um, gave three carbon and four H2. All right. So let's add up the same on the reactant side. Uh, we'll add, of course. Product side will cancel with reactants if there's any of the same, and product side ones will add, of course, if they are the same. <clears throat> so the first thing I notice, <clears throat> excuse me, the first thing I notice is that the three carbon is going to cancel with those three carbon. So that's good because carbon doesn't appear in my overall. The, oops, the oxygens are going to add, so that's perfect, and the four hydrogens also, look at this, they're going to cancel. So one is a reactant, one is a product, that's good. And what I'm going to have left is on my reactant side, I'm going to have C3H8 and now 5O2, which is what I want. Awesome. And product side is now 3CO2 and 4H2O, which again is matching what I want. So I know that my changes that I made right here, my little notes to myself, this is good. This is what I want because when I've added the three of these together after making the changes, it's matching my overall reaction. So now all I want to do is to go back sort of to my changes that I made, apply that to the delta H, and then we're going to 
add those delta H's together, they get the overall delta H of my reaction. So the first one was 394. Let's see, we got a calculator here. Of course not. Note to self, bring calculator next time. So 394 multiplied by 3, and of course that's a negative, so this becomes negative. We can see this here. Actually, I'll do it down here. Negative 1182 kilojoules. The second reaction was a times 4. So I'll make my little note here. So 285 multiplied by 4 gives me a negative again because it's exothermic. 1140 kilojoules. And the third one was only a reverse. So I didn't multiply anything, but I did reverse it. So I'm, uh, because I wrote the reaction in the opposite direction, I have to change the sign of my delta H. So it's exothermic that direction. When I write it the opposite way, it's now endothermic. So this becomes a positive 104. I'm going to add the three of these together. So 1182 negative plus 1140 plus 104, and my delta H is negative 2,218 kilojoules per mole. And this is going to be your final answer, your delta H for your overall reaction that we're looking for. To me, that answer makes sense because I know that this is a combustion reaction and combustion reactions are exothermic. So a negative value here for this delta H seems to be right in line of where it actually should be. All right, there's several examples, like I said, in the workbook that you can try. There's probably about maybe 20 Hess's Law problems that you can work through yourself and um, get a little bit of practice with how to, you know, how to manipulate these particular questions. So have a look at them. You can check the solutions, of course, on your D2L. And if you have any problems, as always, you can ask in class or you can email me and um, I'll get back to you, hopefully with some good solutions for that. Thanks for watching everyone and good luck um, working through some of the questions.